Thanks everyone for coming. Um, I'll just start by introducing who's on the panel. Uh, so we have, uh, from the end, we have Chiara Scatti, whose film was The Thing I Left Behind. We have Lily Husbands, oh, quite rightly. Then we have Lily Husbands, who is an experimental um, animation academic. Uh, this is Flora Anabuda, who made the film Entropia. And Katerina Thanasopoulou, who made the last film, Her Voice. So, all very different films, uh, and uh, I'm feeling quite depressed, actually, now I've watched them back again. <laughs> So I want to start maybe talking a bit about the world creation that's going on with all of your films. And um, Katarina, let's start with you, because you, we saw yours last. And that's the first time I've seen it at that scale, because Katarina's film was made for gallery installation. Um, and just seeing all of those technologies all in that space, in that bunker, could you talk a little bit about what you're evoking with, uh, with your, uh, your hallucinatory little film? Um, well, it, it's a film where... That, that I made together with uh, Eleni Koniadu, who is a sonic artist and academic. And it was, our, our, words, our worlds basically collided. So this film has to do with uh, camouflage and hallucinations and sound and voice and ghosts. So I built that film in CGI by essentially constructing the space first and then bringing the character in and I feel that as I was making the film, as I was making her space, um, I would imagine it, it as a, a place where she could dance. So it was like a, a floor ready for her to dance on a stage. And the technology is meant to, uh, to be both uh, retro and, and futuristic. So there are elements from the history of different types of archive and sound, but also pieces of kit that we haven't yet seen. So that was fun. And is it, I got, you get the sense that like, the ghost in the machine has outlived us all. I think that, uh, I think there's something about the, the, there's something about science fiction that, that tends to look to the front. But I feel that more and more that we are haunted by pasts. And to an extent we're haunted by futures that never quite came true. And it's a very strange time now, especially, I feel, this yeah. point that we're reaching. I think that's sort of felt in a lot of the films. And Flora, what about your film, Three Worlds Colliding? Well, um, it started with um, me sitting in a cinema and watching uh, a Michel Gondry film about uh, Noam Chomsky. And there was this sentence, like, what happens if, uh, if something goes wrong and you meet yourself? And uh, this was the main... Uh, inspiration of this story and I started to just thinking about three characters chasing each other and actually it's just one like, yeah. and about the different so the different stages is it almost like for me it felt like sort of past present future or, or do you just sort of see them as parallel worlds does it matter it doesn't actually because there I, since it's uh, done I heard many different interpretations uh, all of them are very close to mine, so because of that, I don't want to spoiler it. But I'm I'm very uh, happy to hear new ones. But actually, this could work, I think. Like yeah. Just say yeah, that's really good, really perceptive. <laughs> <laughs> and Kiara. Um, so yeah, my well, this the thing that I wanted to convey was the feeling of um, a, a, a terminally ill person and how one can perceive his own self when the life you've been living has completely changed and you cannot go back. So you're st stuck from um, your old self, which is basically a dream now and a memory, and this new self that has been imposed um, on you by a, well, a very cold and pragmatic caretaker. So basically my world started from that, and then I decided to look at, um, you know, future, like how, in the future, we, we're going to take care of patients and uh, especially elderly. And so I, I built this world where like, the population has grown and so much and so many people just got 
really old, so that we cannot pay for all the healthcare um, that sh we should provide, and therefore we just use robots and smart houses. And this robot, this robot that takes care of um, the, the the main character is actually um, the perfect uh, doctor because he knows how to take care of her, but at the same time, he doesn't truly understand what she's become, and she doesn't understand what she's become uh, as well. So it's uh, like this journey of truly accepting that you're something different, and yeah. But you choose at the end for her to sort of reject everything that's going on. So what do you, what are your feelings then about smart houses and AI? And well, um, it's very strange because it's not uh, it's not really sci-fi as in it's actually happening right now, and especially in Japan, where like the population has stopped growing, but everybody's getting really old. So they're all preparing to this moment when they have to take care of elderly, And there already are robots taking care of old people. And when I researched, I felt this strange ambiguity because, well, it is helpful because we all, well, we all rely on machines every day already. We are like already half cyborgs. But on the other hand, is this just an excuse to leave people alone? And is it going to be better or worse? And so, I don't know. I, I have no idea what the answer is because it's such a strange thing that's happening. So, Lily, is there anything you'd like to say about any of the films or ask them any questions? Oh, goodness. Um yeah, I, I, I was just thinking, you know, as I was watching them, um, just there's something about, uh, I mean, animation in particular and, and has such a strong and, and kind of uh, profound connection with, with science fiction and fantasy. And, but I'm thinking in these sorts of um, more independent sort of uh, shorter forms that we get to see such vivid uh, visualizations of these kinds of uh, alternative realities or, or, or speculative um, futures or realities or or technologies and and I think it's it's such a um, it's such a it's such a free and, and kind of exciting way of thinking about um, possibilities and impossibilities and you know as you were saying Katarina looking at the past as well and sort of engaging with possibilities uh, uh, from 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 a perspective of, of the past and I, I don't actually have a, a, a question at the moment, but I was just sort of struck by how um, rich the visual language for animation is in these contexts, especially in a short form uh, moment, because because uh, we don't have the same kind of stipulations of of narrative or or fitting into a live action sort of setting where you have human beings being something, and that kind of um, uh, frees up the metaphors that we can use and the and the symbols and the the spaces that we can invent. So it's really it's such an exciting place for it. We haven't got very long, so has anyone got a question from the audience? Oh, Alex, straight on there. Hi, I'm Alex, thanks for the programme and for all your films. And the programme's described here in the notes as a programme of sci-fi films. I'm curious to know whether when you were presenting your project to your professors or to funding bodies or to potential producers, whether each of you used that word sci-fi and science fiction to describe your film. I use the word Kubrick. <laughs> <laughs> Because I, I think, I feel that a lot of um, animation work tends to go a little bit more towards magic realism. Um, and I think all these films equally belong to magic realism. Um, but I'm, I've got certain uh, ghosts that haunt me that tend to be the corridor and, and, and the ghost and, uh, and camouflage and, and the mask. But yes, so almost. My film was a bit uh, tricky because it's a graduation film, so I didn't have to uh, ask for funds. Uh, but uh, I think I never used the word sci-fi for that. But uh, I used experimental, which is also very tricky. <laughs> um, yeah, I never used the word sci-fi for my film, even though I'm very unconsciously doing sci-fi. And when someone put it out at me, I didn't even know what sci-fi meant at the time. I was like, well, what is that? And so I never used that um, until this last film when I then realized, yeah, it is sci-fi. But it, I don't know, I never presented it as in, I don't know, I never put a genre to the film. So, yeah. Anyone else? Did I see another hand? Uh, 
Um, do I think that experimental animation is received differently from experimental cinema? Live action film. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, in a short answer, sure. Um, but I think, I think a lot of that is, is, quite, is changing and it has changed quite a lot in the last 20 years. I mean, I think um, there are a lot of ideas that, that all cinema, even live action, is animation. You know, I'm sure you're familiar with that idea. But, but the, um, also thinking about the, quite often, uh, even live action experimental film is really concerned with, with sort of um, playing with form or technique or kind of a, a degree of abstraction, which has a sort of similar relationship to, to things that happen in, in experimental animation and, and other kinds of animation as well. So I think um, they are often seen as different, but I think there's, there's so much crossover that it's, it's, it's sometimes not very helpful to think of them as separate, um, even though there is still, I think, some, a, a bit of uh, perhaps prejudice, I, I dare to say, against uh, some forms, but yeah. Anyone else want to answer? No? I, I, I agree. Uh, what I want to say. Yeah, I, I also just wanted to say that sometimes it's just melting together because uh, of the technique. And it also depends uh, if it's the technical exper um, experiment or experimental dramaturgy or so. Um, yeah, but. Yeah, there's so many different types of uh, and ways of thinking about what, what it experimental even means in this context, whether it's a stylistic thing or a formal thing or. A distribution context, you know, it could could be all kinds of things. Yeah, I think that I think it depends on the kind of animation you're talking about as well. But I think the the majority of the films that we've watched are also drawn animation, and I feel there's something very special about um, films that are made by hand, whether they're drawn or uh, or I guess even sculpted digitally, um, but definitely like a collage or a drawing. Um, carries a little bit more of the person that built it, whereas a live action film depends a lot also on the performers, on the actors, on the cameras, on the lenses. On, and maybe for that reason, uh, animation ages in a different way. Like there are certain films, certain quite old films now that are still quite fresh. But then again, certain new films that also seem like they were made 20 years ago, but in a charming way. So yes, I mean, yeah. I think we're all quite biased as well, though. Obviously, we're going to go, experimental animation's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> quite pro. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. It wasn't on purpose. I don't think so. I think I did try and get some stop motion in there, but unfortunately it was unsuccessful. Um, but for instance, I know like Astrid Goldsmith, um, who is making at the moment a stop motion film about Mars. So she's got some very nice little Martians she's been creating. So um, I think, yes, all animation embraces, I think, the sci-fi genre. And I think, well, I mean, the reason I put this program together was partly provocatively to say, Sci-fi is a very male genre, but look, women can do it too. Uh, but also because we are living in a time that does feel like we are just in a giant Black Mirror episode every moment. Um, so it sort of felt quite prescient to kind of make a program like this. Maybe I should have just made one that was all dancing cats. Maybe that's what we actually need. Uh, but there we go. <laughs> Sometimes it is. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to think there was some lightness in there. Um, but then also maybe there is something to the idea of the of of the way that a kind of the metamorphosing and 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 of a, of a sort of two D or I mean I'm 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 there are lots of ways of doing that in other in other uh, techniques but um, but you get a sense of sort of a place a real place in in stop motion don't you um, whereas some of these places can be so, so fluid and so changeable and so you know the very stuff of them completely um, transforms. You know, and that's a magical idea that's that's sort of related to this fantastical other other space, other world that I think is connected to sci-fi. I, I mean, I, I fully believe that there are amazing sci-fi stop motions, but that's just an idea that comes to my mind as a part of what's exciting about 2D. Can I make a little comment? I think something that really struck me about all the films is their use of sound. 
And I think that sci-fi sound plays such a major part in, in imagining a, a, a future that is just that little bit less than unreal, like a little bit closer to real than for us to have an inkling of belief in it. And I think the sound works so imaginatively and really tells us so much about these, these worlds. And with your film in particular, because you work very closely with the, with the sound artist, did you, were you sort of working alongside each other making the visuals and the sound or did one drive the other? No, that's quite interesting because with uh, Eleni Koniadu is, is a sonic artist and she does create all sorts of compositions and, um, and, and installations, but she didn't do the sound in this particular project. We worked together in, in writing the film and, uh, and co-directing the film, uh, but the sound was designed by a, a sound designer uh, from afar. So we only met, uh, I only met him when the a film... Man. Yes, yes, they, they <laughs> were allowed. <laughs> okay, and Flora, but what about your sound? What would you say about your sound design? What were your choices there? Yeah, and I used the sound. Um, first of all, I, I was working with a with a very amazing sound designer called uh, Gergely Matos. He's a musician actually, and um, I asked him to make the sound very musical. And I wanted to use it as a tool to connect the three uh, parallel realities. So that was the basic concept of the sound design. Well, um, I. I really don't want to say this. It wasn't really a happy relationship with my sound designer, so I can't. <laughs> so Are they in the so room? <laughs> so sorry. Uh, yeah, I can't lie, so I just can't say it. Um, but yeah, in in theory, I <laughs> planned um, a lot of sounds um, ahead because I thought, yeah, they they were like. Because with sound, well, I mean, with film, we have so many ways of telling something. So you, with sound, you can have a layer of, of a story, and then you have, can have another story with, 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 with the images, and another one with the camera, and so on. So I had this whole story going on with the sound that, unfortunately, didn't get to be done. But um, yeah, that was, that was the idea. So I think sound is like really, really important in films, and it's like half the film is actually the sound. So, for example, in horror films, if you don't hear anything, it's not really even scary. So it's, yeah, it, it'd be great to have sound to be proud of. But <laughs> <laughs> well, that was very honest. Yes, it was too honest, I'm sorry, again. Uh, I, I really loved your, your robot, that really irritating... Little yeah, that was, sunshine. That was, I, yeah, it took took a really long time. I even like searched for uh, some songs. They were really irritating. I was like, I want this, <laughs> and so the sound designer asked for help, and yeah, I was proud of that. And I'm like, yes, yes, this is good. Thank God, the irritation got. Yes, very irritating. Yeah, yeah. I was, just, I was just thinking about the, you know, so often we, those sorts of tonal kind of 80s synth sounds are what we kind of associate with sci-fi genre. But, um, but in, in these animations and another, there's such a, a kind of visceral, you know, really, those seem, seem, to, seem to be very ethereal and kind of, they remind us of sort of space travel or something. But, but these, there were so many kind of slurpy and sort of like, you know, um, viscous sounds in these that really connect you to the, to the actual life of what's going on and it makes it feel very real, you know, it's kind of a contrast. But also some synths in there as well. But a bit of synth. Yeah, we can't we'll have yeah. some synths. What's a sci-fi screening without synth? Yeah, we could have got John Carpenter to come and do something. Oh, sorry, can't see you, you're sort of blending in. The films oh. of, of women who, um, I don't at all think of sci-fi as giving us access to someone's internal world, and yet these films did that so beautifully. And I can't say that something I think of uh, normally with sci-fi. And um, as you just said, this sort of viscous and you know <laughs> lubricous <laughs> uh, world that that um, women have, you know, given us this access to in sci-fi that I've never seen before. Um, it's very individualized and very beautiful. So, thank you. Oh, thank you. Also a bit filthy as well, which is always good. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, sorry, I can't, it's very hard to see. I need spotlights. No worries. Um, 
I've always been curious about like when like, I see these films that to me like so kind of like visceral and, and low-key disgusting but in like a good way <laughs> I, I've always wondered like do you want to make people uncomfortable or are you just like enjoying the weirdness of making it yourself that's a good question that's a good question I like that question you're making them uncomfortable I think, thinking I, about I, it. I think I have some <laughs> and I, I really like I enjoy making um, like Officially disgusting things, uh, uh, looking, I mean, showing it in a beautiful way, and I'm not talking about my drawing, not over it. <laughs> just, uh, just to show that it's also just a thing. It's just a fly putting some maggots and eggs, and it's nice. <laughs> and one day we will be eating them. That's yeah, probably exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Like, I'm, I think we all wanted to, to convey a feeling. And if it's makes you making you uncomfortable, it's because it was meant to, hopefully. Um, so we really enjoy looking at people and making them uncomfortable. If that's the question, yes, that's, that's it. I don't think that that question was included in my film because it seemed it's a really interesting question. But I feel that. I am more interested in making people pause and lose themselves than be disgusted, uh, which is a very, uh, you know, it's, it's a fantastic um, ambition. Um, but I think I, I am more interested in, yes, making people pause. So, yes. I, it's interesting because I think it's, it's very relevant to, to the sort of, um, it's another kind of, it's a very interesting question because it's another kind of affective response that of being disgusted, you know, which you, in many science fiction films, you have got men fighting other men or men fighting other bad foreigners, i.e. aliens. So there's a lot of like fear and glory and, and the, 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 the horror of that thing that is strange. But I think these films did it in a different way. They're not so much about the hero, or maybe it's because I've been reading Ursula Le Guin, yeah. perhaps. <laughs> yes, but it's true though. It's it is a it is a it is a un, it, These were universes that you didn't necessarily have to see somebody die. You could see them being eaten, but it wasn't really about somebody kind of getting their sword and winning over everything. It's not that clear thing of winning or losing, which is quite fascinating. Mm. I'd like to say that was a conscious choice, yeah. but it's not. Yeah. Uh, final question. You, you. Hi, um, I'm an art student, and I have some very interesting question. Do you got any advice for a young female animator who have no experience of like, animation backgrounds, but have few little knowledge? Make films, that'd probably be the advice. Just, just make them. Keep animating and make, make, sh make the time, like, Maybe gifts, almost. Make very short little poems. Make, make little things that you can share with people. They don't have to be a long film. Make little things and send them away. Send them off for, for people to see. Do what, what, do what you enjoy. But what if, how, how should I say this, but what if, if, you, if you want to make a controversial film, how is, would you get backslash by some other audience and you, you might, would you be banned from it? No, you should no. It's uh, the the wonderful thing with animation is that it is quite hard to offend <laughs> with animation. So you can I feel that you can be really controversial um, in a wonderful yes. Don't be afraid of that. Any other advice? Same. <laughs> okay. Any final thoughts? Okay, we'll take one question, then we'll end. Go on. Go on. Uh, I was wondering if you could offer some insights into the process, like from the idea that you could be here, how many times you've worked with Bob? <laughs> okay, you got to do it really fast, there, because we've got to leave. Oh. Okay, I had such a wonderful time working with Eleni Cognado, and I feel because a lot of the work that I do is alone, and I tend to scream to myself, um, and then make me a cup of tea, and it's all better. But actually, <laughs> W finding exciting people to work with means that you have a conversation. Uh, the film went through quite a few different 
iterations, but all was work in progress, and it was all about the dialogue and doing something and discussing and showing, and it's just the best thing making films, though, I feel. Flora? Um, for me, it took like two years to make this film, and uh, I was lucky to have a very nice crew, but I was living it at school, and I think I had to, I, I wanted to give up like seven times, <laughs> but I really enjoyed also, so, and yeah, it was quite hard, yeah. <laughs> yeah, mine as well was a student film, so it took me like, the, whole, the whole year to make, and yeah, you end up being alone for a very long time with yourself, and maybe sometimes with your cat, and you feel like maybe you're, it's not worth it, I don't know. I'm sorry, I'm being so honest, I should just uh, <laughs> shut up. But yeah, then, I don't know, then you watch it again and you're like, yeah, maybe it was worth it, maybe, maybe that's what I want to do. So, yeah, you want to give up, but if that's what you want to do, what, what would you do rather than yeah. doing that? So. If you're not crying by the end of your film, then your film's no good, I think. Yeah, not crying too loud. Yeah. If no one can hear you, then it's fine. <laughs> like in space, no one can hear you scream. Making an unmade film, no one can hear you sil silently weep. Uh, okay, we'll end on that positive, cheery note. Uh, I'd love to thank you all. Thank you for your brilliant films and your contribution. Thank you, Leah, for having us.